weeks of geothermal activity, including earthquakes that were driving the residents of Reykjanes Peninsula mad, on the 19th of March, 2021, a strange red glowing light appeared in the sky, heralding the beginning of an eruption. Scientists were confounded. They weren't sure how long this was going to last and what form it would take. There was mad panic to go and visit this new volcano, including traffic jams that lasted for miles. This was the beginning of a new eruption. And today we're going to look at exactly how this experience was for those who were able to see it on those very first days. Welcome to episode two of The Volcano, a memorial. My name is Josie Ann Gatins. I'm a journalist with the Reykjavik Grapevine. I'm here with our editor-in-chief, Vala Gretesen. Um, we've discussed in our previous episode the build-up to the volcano, um, the earthquakes, the tension that was building, the media. But now let's turn to the actual night that this happened. Um, and it was, it was an evening, a Friday yeah. evening in March. Yes. Uh, where were you when you first heard the news? I was watching TV, uh, <clears throat> I was just with my family. There was this show called uh, Vekan, uh, like The Week with Gisli Martin. It's, a, it's a, uh, like an entertainment show. And we were watching that. Uh, and all of a sudden there was like a banner uh, that came on the TV said that uh, the eruption had started. Oh my goodness. Uh, and it was basically the best, uh, we found out later actually, that it was the, the, the most effective uh, way to act, like publicize the, mm -hmm. this uh, eruption. I took my computer, uh, I checked it out, and all of the media was like, they think this has started. Okay. There, there was like some red sky around and uh, and there is something different. different. <laughs> At this time, actually, we thought that the, the volcano was not going to go off because the, the seismic activity like went up and up and up and up and up and up and we thought like now it's going to explode because that's like it's, it's always has been in Iceland. Yeah. But all of a sudden it dropped, but then it, it started. It mm -hmm. makes no sense. So I, uh, either I contacted Art or he contacted me. I have no idea how we did this. Uh, and we were basically just sitting there like, should we go? Like, is it possible to go there? We have no idea where it is. And in all of the news before, uh, all the scientists said like, when this happens, uh, th there's gonna be gas and this gas is dangerous and yes. they could kill you even. And they were talking about, they would have like a weather report and that's the gas report. <laughs> like it literally was like this. And it was a bit scary to be honest. So uh, me and Art, we like we said like, okay, let's, let's just go as close as we can and just do a newscast and uh, perhaps we'll see a new a volcano. I have no idea. Uh, but not only that, because I'm an incredibly irresponsible kind of a guy. Uh, I, I invited my son with me, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is a teenager. He was 12 or 13 at the time. And he, he, and he thought he was going to go and see a volcano. And he'd never uh, seen one before. He's never seen yeah. one before. Uh, but uh, I went to the car, uh, I think I, I went to get uh, asked, we took, with our, took the press passes with us uh, and we drove only to find ourselves in the most hectic traffic jam of all time. People <laughs> <laughs> were like, what is happening? <laughs> it's like, like nine, what was it, nine or 9.30 in the, yeah, in, in the yeah, evening yeah, yeah. on Friday, mm -hmm. of course, everybody wanted to go out and see the volcano. Everyone so, had the same idea. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we were online, we were like uh, well, in the car, we were like, and the police were saying like, do not go there. Uh, the civil guard was saying, we have no idea what this is, what's ha happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be gas. They, they, have, they had closed down, literally, there was like a lockdown in Thorlogsöp because in this uh, gas is like uh, cyanide and yeah, but, like, God knows what is in it, you know, in this, uh, this pollution. Uh, and then you ju they just knew that this was going off, this volcano, and the wind was coming from the west and blowing mm -hmm. it basically over there. So we slowly went through this traffic jam and we saw cars always turning around. Uh, the, the police had put up a blockade mm -hmm. uh, and this was a very tense kind of uh, atmosphere. 
And as we got closer, I ended up going, talking to the police officers. I just showed them my uh, press pass mm -hmm. and just asked them, like, how dangerous is this? And they were like, I have no idea. Nobody knew. That was yeah. the thing. It was so early doors and it taken everybody by surprise. Yeah. And, that, you know, people had just basically seen this, this glow in the sky and been right. like... Something is up. Right. And basically, uh, the police led us through the blockade uh, and we drove. And I remember there was like uh, the streets were empty and like uh, there was like police cars like uh, that have like completely like just emptied everything. And it was just a weird atmosphere. And it was the same feeling as we were driving there. It was like no cars, nothing. Uh, never seen this. Like it's a very popular street, of course, because it's, it's the, basically the only route from the International Airport to Reykjavik, mm -hmm. so it's always filled with cars. Yeah. And it was just odd. We went to Grindavik, uh, and there we had, uh, we were hit by another blockade uh, with the search and rescue teams. And then we were like, okay, like, I, I went to talk to them, and we were like, how serious, like, do we have to have gas masks and mm -hmm. so on? And he was like, no, 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 just like, uh, just watch out for the, like, keep the heat on your cars, like, the, like the, the, uh, what do you call it? Like, like the fans? Yeah, the yeah. fans, like, yeah. within. It keeps the air outside, mm -hmm. basically. And said, if you feel, like, uh, dizzy or, like, if you're, uh, if you're like, hurting, like, like, like dizzy, what do you call it? Like, when you, when you need to throw up? Nauseous. Nauseous, yes. exactly. Uh, then just turn around. Mm -hmm. And we were like, shit. So this could be, like, we could be driving and we could feel that and we just have to turn around. Right. Like, yeah, there is nothing else to do, actually. And what but was the mood, like, in the car? I mean, you're with your kids, yeah. like... You know. I was obviously starting to be erratic. <laughs> <laughs> it was not calling you out, but I mean, like, <laughs> what was the conversation? Like, were, were, were you chatting? Were you excited? Were you like, you know, what was what was what uh, were people feeling? It, it was it was we were very excited. I, I wasn't that worried, and I knew that we, how the wind was, and I knew that we were not in the wind itself, mm -hmm. uh, so we would not be getting this pollution to us. Uh, but we we drove there like a little bit uh, further up to these uh, like to the wilderness almost, uh, and we basically saw this very red sky. And it was like like there was no other way to describe it. It was like this earth had opened and like hell was basically there somehow, you know. And it was so ominous and it's so because the, everything was just pitch black. It was yeah. 19th of March. Uh, it's like it's absolutely black. Uh, and the mountains were completely white. It was like, it wasn't much snow, but it was, we were in, in that kind of an area yes. that there was basically always snow there. Mm -hmm. uh, so me and Art, we decided just to stop there uh, and do the newscast. Like you can see here, there's like this huge red, like almost cloud over here. You can probably see on the lower end over the mountains, the black mountains, there is the fire. Uh, they think, they're not sure how high the fire is, but we know before, uh, they thought they could be from 10 meters up to 100 meters high. Uh, the, the tunnels of it is not that big, actually. They, they think it's like, uh, they're not how, sure how wide the crack is. I heard in the news like 500 meters, uh, not sure if that is correct. The crack itself is only 200 meters, but uh, if it goes on, it could be up to like kilometer or two or whatever. Uh, but it's, it's impossible to say right now. It did, it took everybody by surprise and, and there was a, a kind of a while before people figured out what the right response was. And so the, the, the blockades were in place yeah. and that, you know, that was kind of the first night where people were just like, stay away until we've worked this out, basically. They were kind of just asking for time just mm -hmm. to understand what was going on. And then we saw the first footage and I think we used it actually in the first newscast. Uh, and it was from the civil guard. They were they were flying there with uh, on a helicopter over with uh, with scientists, and it was absolutely beautiful to see the first footage oh, of this. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, the thing like it's that very specific clip over yeah. and over, and it's almost like um, it almost looked like looking into the eye of a beast or yeah, something. Right. It was really, but even at that point, it it you could kind of tell it wasn't that big. Yeah. Right. And that was basically what all the scientists said in the beginning. They were like, and they they were like almost demeaning about it. It's like they did not only just say like this is a small one. Said like this is like a looser one. Or like <laughs> like, like the, the, the Icelandic word is raivit, and raivit is like a wuss or like a, yeah. something like it's a wussy. Kind like, of pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of pathetic. <laughs> they, were, they were not that impressed. I have to say. But we had no idea, of course, but they were like, that, 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 that's what they were saying. And 
we were pretty convinced that this was, uh, uh, I mean, because it was so small, uh, basically me and us, we, we, we promised ourselves, like, let's just uh, go there, the, 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 like tomorrow, as early as we can. I heated water, uh, took with me coffee, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Art picked me up, I think, uh, and we just drove. And we, we, of course, yeah, and the first thing we did, actually, and this is, not your typical hike. It's like we need to buy sandwiches, uh, waters, uh, and uh, gas masks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, which was the weirdest thing I've ever bought before a hike. So we went to this store, uh, and we were lucky because they, they, like I think like a few days later they, oh, yeah. they were they were out with of gas masks. Totally, you were so, one of many people trying to get this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I we went there, talked to this guy. He's like, okay, we need gas masks. Uh, what does what works here? And it's not like way too extreme. I don't want to look like I'm going into like second, second world war here with a mustard gas behind me. But I mean, it is serious. These, yeah, these yeah, yeah. fumes are serious and that's what a lot of the, the, the when you were getting, you know, the civil defense team and stuff, they weren't necessarily talking about, because this was a pathetic volcano in their yeah. eyes, they weren't talking about lava being a danger, obviously asking people to be very careful yeah, around yeah. it, but the real concern was the gas. Yes. It was a huge concern. Uh, we bought this gas mask and we also bought uh, sandwiches. We went to this gas station uh, in Hapnafjörður and it ended up being the, 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 gas, the, the gas station that we always stopped. It, was, it became a tradition. <laughs> we always stopped there, had a coffee, a hot dog or a sandwich or whatever. Uh, and then we drove, drove on. And we, uh, luckily, we had the press pass. Uh, but the thing is that uh, there were two blockers, two, two accesses to the area. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you had a press pass, you could drive very close to the to the volcano itself. Okay. Uh, it only took us like afterwards when they changed the rules. It took us like one hour, one and a half to to hike there. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, because they were so stressed and they were so slow in so many ways, and they absolutely underestimated how. Uh, how eager people were to see the volcano, yes. that they had blockage was like, f like basically in Grindavik. Yes. And yes. this meant that people had to hike for, I think it was like 15 or 20 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And also the terrain there is like, it's, it's so tricky, it's so easy to break your legs there, it's, it's horrible. It's all lava, there was yeah. no path because this wasn't an area that people yeah. were accessing. You know, the, the first part, yeah, was like along the road yeah. from, from Grindavik and then people were just like, it was, I went there too very early on and yeah. there's like people stumbling, almost like zombies, yeah. like through the landscape, trying to find yeah. this thing in the middle of nowhere. And this was incredibly dangerous in my opinion. And I was immediately like, this is absolutely insane to do it like this because I even say this in the, in the first video, it's like, it's never the volcano that kills you, it's always the hike. So we started, me and Art. And thankfully Art is a very good hiker also. Uh, and we basically had no idea like where this would be. And I just thought like, I mean, it's a volcano, we'll just find it. It's not hard, right? It's fire <laughs> from the ground. Well, uh, It's pretty small though, it turns out. It's made it pretty small, exactly, and pretty easy to miss. Uh, basically, when we were hiking, it took us much longer time than we were supposed to. Okay. And we could have gone a much shorter route that we uh, took later on. It was basically the, the, the main path to the, to the, to the area mm -hmm. because we, 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 there was no indication that the, the volcano was there. No, no uh, signposts. No one was going, volcano, this way. Exactly. Uh, and the weather was wet and it was weird and it was like wind. Uh, like, yeah, it was quite windy and basically just tiresome. And we hiked and we hiked and at times I was like, like, are we sure this is the right way here? And, and like, and then I, I was more afraid of like, is this like, like five kilometers more or something? Yeah. Because uh, I'm all, like, everything becomes so much harder <laughs> with every kilometer that you add to it. Uh, but finally we saw the smoke uh, and we were just, and Arst actually said before, like, Art literally came to Iceland to see a volcano. If not to see it, then to die in it. <laughs> I, I'm not sure yes. if I was joking about that. I yeah. think it was serious about it. Uh, concerningly uh, so, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, we, we saw this uh, volcano finally, and it, it was just there. We were like, we were just st stunned. Uh, hey there, uh, welcome to Reykjavik Greypa's newscast. Uh, you can see, perhaps see that I'm a little bit sweaty and uh, like wet. It's not a, like a beautiful day today, 
But uh, I'm here in in uh, Geldingar Dalur. It's a horrible name in any in any aspect, and uh, it's not an interesting valley at all, actually. But if you perhaps follow me like this, you can see that there is actually an active volcano behind me right now. Uh, this happened this night. I want to tell you more about it. It's probably the most dramatic Reykjavik Re 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 newscast that we have ever had. Uh, it's actually safe to go down there. The rescue teams are there and they, they're making sure that uh, people are not going too, too close to the lava. But yeah, let's go. I'm going to show you this. Well, you can also just see in the video like how tired I am. Yeah. Like we were like very wet and like kind of, kind of worn down because of the hike. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, very excited and we're like almost like dazed. Yeah, perhaps. yeah. Like kind of overwhelmed. A little bit, yeah. So, uh, and of course, we, then we went down, we just started uh, recording, like, without basically checking anything out. We just, I mean, we asked us to do small B-rolls here and there, but then we just like, let's just go for it and we'll see what happens. How did it feel to be there, finally? It was, uh, it was unreal. Uh, that's the only thing I can say, basically. It's like the heat was like, the, yeah, like the, the environment itself, is, it was literally like being inside. It was so warm, yeah. uh, the, the, the heat was so much. Uh, so like uh, we, were, we were so, I wouldn't say cold, but it was like uh, colder, windy, yeah. but there yeah. was no wind, just heat. And then you could just hear like the, the snark in the, in, the, in the fire and, the, and the, the stones and lava just crawling. Uh, eating up the grass and everything, and you could see like these small rat waterfalls, just of yeah. fire, uh, and we were like, we were quite mesmerized, hypnotized even. Uh, so, yeah, we, we started uh, recording, and I was just like, just ro going, roaming around, and I just felt like the heat, and I was like, God, can you feel the heat here? Like, it, it really, it, it literally like hurts. Uh, and as we went on, the, the, the helicopters became a, a problem. That was the first time we realized that helicopters were absolutely intolerable. Yep. <laughs> they were not our friends. And uh, it was so loud, and it was like, and it was also like they, they were like not only that, but like they were crashing into the experience somehow. It was mm. because it was like uh, it took me a while just to notice them. But when I noticed them, I was like, like. Why is the I'm real world moment. here? I'm having a moment. Yeah, here. yeah. It was like, why is the real world coming down to this adventure here? Yeah. Like, somehow. Uh, and uh, then, yeah, and then we went up, uh, up the hill until we basically just saw the cone there. And I have to say, I've never in my life been so close to a volcano ever. Yeah. This is the biggest crater, obviously. Uh, it's a new mountain, I guess. I mean, we will need to name this something. <laughs> Uh, not sure what that will be. It's incredible to hear the the sound from the volcano. It's almost like a combination of uh, like the ocean and, and and like some brutality, like wet brutality. Uh, the craters are obviously the biggest one are two. Uh, the smaller one doesn't seem that violent, but this one we've been watching it for like an hour or two now, and it obviously it goes stronger like for a minute and then it goes back to kind of normal. Uh, this is, this is safe, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's interesting. This is definitely what you would call a touristic uh, volcano in Iceland, uh, to, as long as you mind the, the gas pollution. And it's just breathtaking in so many ways. It was the craziest moment. It was just, just the heat, the the sound, like this this wet. Uh, I don't know, like it's like if you take a soup and just like slap it all around or something. It's weird to We're sound. not making you in charge of the foley for this, yeah, for sure. No, but, no, uh, yeah, and the smell as well. I mean, it's yeah. such a distinctive uh, experience, a very singular experience. There's nothing like it on Earth, and to experience something that you normally just see in movies or National Geographic or something is... Yeah. I was, uh, I, I, we basically just did the video, and it was, it was, it was surprisingly short. Mm. 
Yeah. And uh, the reason was basically because just in the end, I was like, I have no idea what to say. It's like, this is so incredible that just just see this somehow. And then, of course, uh, Art showed once, like, of course, I had a clue that he, he knew something about cameras, of course. We've been working to, <laughs> together for a while. But uh, he, he really showed how brilliant photographer he is mm -hmm. uh, when it was it basically it was like one minute or two minutes just of like the lava and everything and it was so beautiful and in the end I was the, I, I even thought like how about just I talk for a minute and he just <laughs> do the, does the 90 percent of the rest or something mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah it was it was wonderful and uh, yeah <clears throat> Uh, of course, the hike back, uh, we were ecstatic. It was, the hike back was much easier than we thought, much shorter because we went such a long way. Uh, and we kind of just uh, decided, like, how about just doing this daily? Yeah. I mean, this is, I have never seen anything like this. This is obviously something unique, even in an Icelandic standard. Yes, yeah. And I mean, that was it. I mean, essentially, the beginning of, uh, of the eruption and... The beginning of a of a kind of love affair of yours and arts with with the volcano, a relationship, yeah. and of course, uh, many people ultimately wanted to go and see the volcano. We're going to talk about that in our next episode. The routine formed around visiting and all of the different people who visited from all over the world, even in the middle of a global pandemic. So, stay tuned, and we'll be back with you.